Bright Eyes was still first, studied the monument intently. On the day you can sail amidst the stars, we will meet again. Such simple words, and yet they had come to mean so much to the clans. They were inscribed in an obelisk of strange metallic material that seemed impervious to the ravages of time and to any form of physical or chemical attack that the clans could devise. The obelisk itself had stood unchanged in the same spot for more than 5,000 years, a monument to the day the gods had departed with a promise on their lips. Every member of the clans knew the stories, which had been passed down from generation to generation in a chain that stretched back unbroken to the day the gods descended from the heavens. The clans had been caught in the midst of a terrible calamity. Fire had rained from the sky and torn up the earth. Forests had been reduced to ash, mountains had crumbled, and the seas themselves had boiled. It was so bad that the clans had ceased their endless conflicts to band together in a desperate bid to survive. Yet as more and more of their world had been consumed by the disaster, their efforts were in vain. There was nothing the clans could do. What use were their meagre crafts or sizes against forces that could split the land in two and burn the very sky? But when the clans had been about to give in to despair, the gods had come. Even now, centuries later, the clan remembered. There had been a flash of light in the sky, as though a third sun had been born to rival the two that ruled the heavens. Blasts of thunder and lightning had filled the air, and the skies had been scoured clean. No longer had fire filled the sky. No longer had great chunks of earth come crashing down. Instead, the skies were clear and still, save for a marvellous ship that sailed through the heavens more easily than the ships of the clan sailed across the waters of their world. The gods had descended then, twice the height of the members of the clans, and walking on two limbs rather than on four, as those of the clans did. They had no tails, and they had five fingers instead of four upon their hands. The gods had walked amongst them and helped the clans rebuild their broken world. They had spoken with them too, passing on great wisdom and knowledge. They had even helped the clans to make peace with one another, showing them that they were far stronger together than they could ever be apart. And then the gods had left, but not before leaving behind the obelisk, and his promise. Even as the clans had wept, for there was not a single person amongst them who had not loved the gods, they had held that promise close to their hearts. On the day you can sail amidst the stars, we will meet again. It seemed an impossible goal. Who were the clans to reach for the stars? Yet the gods had believed in them, had trusted that one day, even if it was far, far away, the clans would reach the stars. On that day, they would be worthy. They would see the gods again. Time passed. A year turned into a decade, turned into a century, turned into millennia. The clans went from living in meagre huts and mud brick dwellings to building cities of stone. They pushed themselves to further the crafts and sciences they knew, their quick, curious minds allowing them to make new discoveries and master new techniques. They went from warring with one another over small portions of their world to exploring the world in its entirety and laying claim to it all. More time passed, and although the words of the gods were never forgotten, doubt began to creep in. It had been so long since the gods had come. Perhaps the gods were many stories, tales that their ancestors had devised to explain their survival of the great calamity that had almost doomed their species. Yet there the obelisk stood, his words plain for all to see. And then the clans devised a way to communicate using radio waves. Excited with their discovery, they sent a message out into the void to anyone who could hear. Some thought it foolish, others thought it romantic. But all were shocked when a reply came in the same ancient dialect of the clans that the gods have used to write their promise upon the obelisk. You have spoken to the stars, and your words have been heard. You have come so far, but there is still more for you to do. We were like you once, and we would have you join us amidst the stars. The message was delivered across multiple frequencies, and it originated from the largest of their world's moons. It was a sign that the gods had been real, and it was a reward for all the progress the clans had made. The gods were waiting for them. The clans redoubled their efforts. There were arguments about the gods. Some believed they were not gods, but were instead a species far more technologically advanced than their own. To those such as Bright Eyes, it did not matter if they were gods or mortals. They had saved the clans, and they were waiting for them with open arms. Eventually the clans reached their largest moon in the craft of their own design. It was a crude, ugly thing. But they managed to get half a dozen of their kind safely through the void. On the surface of the moon they found another obelisk. It was the source of the radio signal, and there was a simple message on it. You are almost there. 
leave your star behind, and you will find a place at our table. We are waiting. 200 years. It took 200 years for the clans to build their first faster than light drive. In that time they built colonies on three of their moons, and dozens of asteroids, and on another two of the planets in their solar system. They had done what their ancestors thought impossible. Now, there was only one more step to take. Bright Eyes tucked his limbs against his body. The ship trembled around him. He was the finest scholar amongst the clans, the one who best understood the stories of the gods and all the lessons they had imparted to the clans. There would be no shortage of arguments about who should be chosen as one of the dozen crew members of the ship, but all had agreed that a scholar was required. 5,000 years was a long time, and the monuments on their world and the moon were very old. Would the gods still exist? If they were mortal, it was possible that they had passed into memory, leaving behind only ruins. But if they still lived, if they still waited for the clans, then there needed to be someone amongst the crew who could speak to them of the legacy they had left behind, of the gratitude the clans felt for the gifts they had been given. Bright Eyes wanted to believe the gods still existed. He did not care if they were divine or mortal. He simply wished to meet them, to see with his own eyes the people who had given his so very much. He wanted to speak with them. He wanted to ask them why they had helped the clans, why they had taken the time to save people so far below themselves. But above all, he did not want the clans to be alone. The thought that the universe was empty, that they lived alone, lived to sail amidst the stars, was a thought too terrible to contemplate. Many times he had looked at the night sky and dreamt of others doing the same, others who were not like him. Today, we would find out if those hopes were to be realised or dashed. Beside him, the captain of the ship nudged him with his right forelimb. Are you ready? Bright Eyes nodded. As ready as I can be. The captain settled into his position and gestured for the others to do the same. The path has been cleared. The time is at hand. Stand by to activate the hyperspace drive. He closed his four eyes and then opened them. His expression one of serenity, despite the weight of the hopes and dreams placed upon them. Every member of the clans was looking to the skies now and hoping that they would succeed. Engage hyperspace drive. The ship crashed out of hyperspace, and Bright Eyes staggered about the ship in a daze. Dimly, he was aware of the others doing the same. Nausea threatened to overwhelm him, and he hastily removed his helmet so he could empty his three stomachs into the nearest waste receptacle. That, that had been more taxing than the experts had predicted. Yet, as the nausea faded, his eyes widened. There, visible through a nearby window, was a single star. They had done it. The clans lived in a system with two stars, and to see only a single star outside meant that they had succeeded. They were in another star system. Finally, after 5,000 years, the clans had learned to sail amidst the stars. Yet despite the beauty of the star and the four planets he could see, Bright Eyes could not help but feel a deep pang of disappointment. They were alone here. No other ships had come to meet them. The gods were not there. Or were they? All crew return to their positions on the bridge, the captain cried. Our sensors have detected a gravitational anomaly and an increase in exotic particle radiation. Bright Eyes was no engineer, but he knew what that meant. He hurried back to the bridge and stood alongside the others. The space in front of their ship crackled as though filled with lightning. A strange mist, like fog rolling over the ocean, spread, and a shadow loomed. Indistinct at first, but growing more and more solid with each passing moment. It was a ship. And what a ship it was. The clans could not build something this big, but I never imagined that something this big could be built that moved through the void between worlds. This exceeded every ship in the fleet combined. This was not a ship. It was a mountain range moving, a titan of the void that dwarfed even the wildest fantasies of the clan's artists and dreamers. If all its absurd size, the other ship was beautiful. It reminded him of the great beasts that dwelt in the oceans, sleek yet deadly, graceful yet powerful. The ship transitioned completely into real space, and Bright Eyes tried to burn the image into his mind. Anyone who could build such a thing was right to call themselves a god. What? What do we do? Someone asked. The captain looked at Bright Eyes. We will speak to them. Scholar, that is your task. Bright Eyes gulped and strode towards the communication system with as much confidence as he could muster. He waited for a channel to come online before he spoke the words that he had practiced in his mind so many times. Yet in his practices, his voice had been calm, filled with serene confidence. Now his voice trembled, 
and a mix of awe and fear filled each word. We are from the clans, he said in the ancient dialect of his people, the same dialect that could still be found on the two obelisks. We are from the clans, we have learned how to sail amidst the stars. We have come to meet the ones who saved our ancestors. Are you them? For a long moment, there was nothing. Bright Eyes felt foolish. Something is seizing control of our systems, the engineer cried. They have opened an audiovisual channel. An image sprang to life via the holographic projector at the heart of the bridge. It showed a figure that stood upon two limbs, a figure with no tail and five fingers upon his hands. The figure spoke, and although his mouth did not move in sync with the words, a translator of some sort was at work. The words it spoke were in the ancient language of the clans. Welcome. We have waited 5,000 years for you. We have watched as you grew, as you mustered the sciences needed to carry you beyond your world. You are everything we could have hoped for and more. The figure spread its arms in a gesture that was somehow inviting. When we reached for the stars, we were alone. Then we found others. Our table was once empty, save for ourselves, but now we enjoy the company of many others. There is a place for you at our table. We would have you sit amongst us as friends. I? Bright Eyes had to blink back tears. We would like that, 